Weir's got a good pick that time from the motion offense. 17-16, 155 to play, first quarter. Willard on top by one, Shelby with the basketball. Greg Mazza in the ball game now for Shelby. Wolford, nice spin move inside and in. Wolford is doing it all, and you can tell he's having a good time because as he comes down the floor, you see a nice smile on his face. A move like that is enough to make anybody smile. Coach Moore, another one smile on his face, blocked by Wolford underneath. And now Shelby with the lead in the ball. Johnson, three-pointer, no good. Regal with the rebound. Steal. Johnson with a two on three, not to his advantage. Gets it back to Wolford. A big guy inside, up, no good. Johnson with a quick back. Shelby is just doing a tremendous job on the offensive boards. Or on the other hand, Willard is doing a very poor job of boxing out. It's definitely not supposed to be this way. Look at the size. Although Shelby is very strong inside, even their little guys are going to the board, though. It's not supposed to be that way. Somebody's got to get a hip on them. That's right. Willard's uh, zone defense is not checking out at all. I'm sure but Coach Bob Haas is very concerned with it. And knowing him as well as I do, I know that he certainly doesn't want to call the first time out of the ball game. He usually doesn't like to call one in the first quarter. <laughs> We've seen Todd Philby, number 33 for Shelby, check into the ball game for Andy Oots. Chris Rothar in the ball game, as is Kevin Stevens for Willard. And that's Rothar there with the ball, and Philly who knocked it out of bounds. Now we'll get a good look at the uh, Flash's offense set up against Shelby's defense, and Shelby undoubtedly will put up a zone on the out of bounds play. Set up in that 2 3 with Wolford, the middleman underneath. Long for three, and it's in and out. There's Wolford with the rebound and the outlet right away to Mazza. Now Johnson nearly had it stolen away by Long, still fighting for it, and Long's going to pick up a personal foul. Good call for the official that time. He was right on top of it. First personal foul on Chris Long. Second on the flashes in the ballgame. Uh, you know, before the game started, we were talking about how casual the coaches were dressing. I see Coach Moore has his coat off already. <laughs> Johnson drive inside, and Shelby almost come up with it, and uh, still fighting for it. Funny control, or is it? And we're going to foul Wolford. Good aggressive play, but uh, I'm sure Coach Moore will tell him not the smartest of fouls. That's right. The ball was already on the floor. First of all, number 44 for the Wiggins, Brad Wolford. His first Scott Kearney checking in the ball game now, replacing Wolford for the final 27 seconds here in the first quarter. Sure, Coach Moore is going to give him a couple convincing words here about that foul, and he'll probably put him back in at the beginning of the second quarter. Give an opportunity, too, for a little bit of a breather. I'm playing awful hard, and as we talked about before we come on the air, very hot in here tonight with this excessive crowd. Shelby standing there. Sticky man-to-man -man defense. Chris Hay with the basketball, the masked man out there. That's Hay working out front with Mazza on him. Looking for help. He gets it inside the Weirs. Turn around, jumper up, and nice touch. Weirs gets the drop. Weirs had a nice touch on the ball that time. He hit the edge of the rim and it bounced in. And it's out the buzzer. This is glass, and that's all as the first quarter comes to an end. Fans are on their feet with good reason. Great action in the first quarter of play. And at the end of the first eight minutes, it's Shelby, 20, Willard, 19. Stay with us. Second quarter action coming your way next. What you were saying during our break, you were very much impressed with the Shelby offensive rebounding uh, at the second that motion. That's right. One of the better offensive rebounding teams I've seen for quite a while. Mark Griego will inbounds the basketball to start period number two. That's Hay working out front again with Mazza on him. Ringer with a baseline move on Oots, and his shot is no good. Rebound controlled by Shelby. Again, just one shot at the glass for Willow on the offensive end. Brett Johnson has done an excellent job of defensing Mark Griego so far in this game. He's been playing him tough one-on-one. -on -one. 
Somebody's going to find uh, a, de a way to defense Mr. Wolford there, though, as Brad now with 10 in the ball game. At that rate, he'll end up with 40. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd rather, I'd rather look at it as 32 because <laughs> he had eight in the first That's quarter. That's right. This is just his first two in the second quarter. I'm sure he would be, be glad of either, 32 or 40, or even knowing uh, Brad Wolford, he'd be glad with 12 as long as the team come out on top. Yeah, I think that's the thing we have to realize is a team concept. Uh, the, both players on both sides are more important with the W than they are with the number of points. Foul was on Maza. It was his second, and you see Rear is at the free throw line, and Eric misses his first opportunity. Willard was three for four in the first quarter of play from the free throw line. Ball still loose. Take the throw by Shelby. Now Mayhek with Maza underneath. Mayhek stops, pops, no good. Wolford again on the offensive board, and he's fouled underneath by Rear. That was about the only time Willard stopped him in, early in the game, and that was a foul. He should receive two foul shots here. As hard as he was hammered, maybe give him three. Rager knew he was going to foul him, made sure the shot did not go off. Well, Ringer, that's his second personal in the game. Third on the Willard Crimson Flashes. And Wolford at the free throw line. Now, this year, made a put a good touch last week here over here. He usually has a way of jinxing guys when you say things like that. He's 11 for 16 from the line for the year. 68% free throw shooter. 12 points now for Brad Wolford and Shelby on top by five at 24-19. Regal to Lacey. Off the glass, no good. Rebound, not out of bounds. Last touch, I believe, by Oots. And the official uh, says that is definitely the case. We will get the basketball back underneath. Seen that nice baseline move there by Lacey. Watching the tape last week of the Guyan game, Lacey used that move a number of times against the Guyan Tigers. That's something that may become very much more evident as the game progresses. And we're going to walk out front by Mark Regal. This is one team I'm sure that Coach Haas will have to be very patient with because of the youth involved in his team. But I'm sure they'll improve game by game as the season progresses. That's now, good. excuse me, Bob, but now I see that uh, Willard has changed into a man-to-man -man defense. Tip through your experience, is it easier to go through the board from a man-to-man -man or to a zone? It's much easier to defense with a man-to-man -man defense because then you have a specific man to box out. Brad Wolford, no boxing that guy out. Wolford, 14 points in the game, and he is on a roll. Tough thing about a man-to-man -man defense is you usually don't get any help. And yeah, we got a little bit of tangle underneath down here as uh, in their overzealousness going for the loose ball. Wolford and Lacey gonna fall on each other. You see the officials trying to start things out. <laughs> Cooler heads prevailed. Yeah. It's a big robbery, there's no doubt about that. That's right. It has been forever. It probably always will be. I nice. see you huddled now with the two captains right. out there. I was going to say, it'd be nice or wise of officials to call uh, official timeout or to give some words of wisdom to the captains. Exactly what happened there is they talked to Wolford and Brigo, or not Wolford, but Johnson and Brigo. Said, hey, you know, it's a big game. We understand that. That's right. Nothing nothing wrong with it. Nobody got hurt or anything like it. Nobody got personal fouls. Actually, no blood, no foul. Let's play <laughs> basketball. <laughs> Ball out of bounds. Coach Morris says, hey, I was right here. I can help you out. But the official says, now we'll give it to Willard. <laughs> See what Brad Wolford, very intense. You know, you've seen he was the one tied up in there. And we've seen that last week as well in the typical Columbia game. There you see a nice move inside the line by Mike Ringer. Right, there was an excellent shot that time by Ringer. He drove the right side but laid it up with his left hand. Johnson drive inside. That's good enough foul. I imagine that's why Coach Haas didn't start out in the man to man because they just don't have the quickness to stay with Shelby, especially that young man there, Brett Johnson. May very well be the best guard in the league. 
You may not see Willard stay in the man-to-man -man defense too long. Mark Regal might be one of the best shooting guards in the league, but as far as driving to the hoop, Fred Johnson is the best I've seen this year and maybe you're not the best in the league, although some people up in Bellevue will try to counter that. They say they have a few good guards up there as well. Then they may have a good chance to find out tomorrow evening. Nate Ranking from Giant can play as well, but uh, he's just a sophomore. We'll make him the best next year. Some good talent in the NOL and a lot of it young. There's a steal off run by Mons that takes the ball away from Chris Long. Over to Wolford. Now Johnson for three. No good and a rebound to go by Mazza. Not going to bounce off of Regal. Great hustle that time by the Whippets to keep that ball alive. 28-21. Shelby on top by seven. Get a good look now at the Whippets out of bounds play against uh, the Willard Fleisch's zone defense now. Mike Mayhead gets the ball into Mazza to Johnson. Greg drives inside and puts a shot up and in. Nice touch, nice drive. That time he drove the middle of the zone. They're turning Johnson loose now. Johnson with 11 in the ball game. Regal for three, left baseline, in and out, controlled offensively on the glass by Ringer, who misses. Ball still loose, and there's Lacey, puts it up and in. That's the first time the Flash has got three or four shots. That time they stayed at the backboard. Now we see, take a look at the Willards' defense. They're back to the zone now. They did not stay in the man-to-man -man very long because of that guard there, Brett Johnson. Shelby with a, pretty much a three-guard look out there now with Mazo, Johnson, and Mayhek, and Wolford in the south. I'll tell you what, if it's not Wolford and Johnson, this time it's Wolford. For Wolford, 16 already in this ballgame. That's half of Shelby's total. Wolford has been unstoppable one-on-one -on -one inside the paint there. Weir shut up. Is it going to be good? No indication yet by the officials that the basket was good. Probably will be in... I think Mike Mayhack was guilty of the personal. The basket is good, so Credit Weirs with his eighth point will send him through the line as well. And I'm not sure, as you say, it probably was Mayhack, but again, no uh, indication. In fact, the officials want to know for sure as well. Is it a one-shot foul or is it a one-on-one? Well, while we have a lull in the action, Bob, we might mention in the preliminary game night, the Willard Flashes came on, out on top in the JV game, 65-58, another high-scoring affair. For JV, wise the Willard now 4-1 on the season, while Shelby drops to 1-3. In that JV game, uh, 18 points for Matt Adams for Willard to lead the way for them. Kirk Hunter had 20 to lead the way for Shelby. They had shot uh, quite a bit off the mark there. And Lingham misses with a neat Wolford on the glass. Long out to Johnson. Johnson goes to the hoop and puts it in. I don't know how he got through all that He had a clear coast last time as Long tried to intercept the pass. That enabled Johnson to go coast to coast. Long takes a shot from foul line extended, no good. And Oots with a rebound. They'll be on the run again at the three on two. Johnson, however, decides to pull it up. Mazza for three. No good. Rebound long. Controlled by Briegel. And he's out of bounds. Get it back to Shelby. I think Coach Moss is going to call a timeout. 34-25. 3.31 to play in the first half. And the Shelby crowd, you can hear them. They're on their feet. Nine-point lead for the Whippets. We'll be back. Second quarter action will continue right after these. First half, 34-25, nine-point lead for the Whippets. And I think that's because mainly of the rebounding strength and the offensive inside play of Wolford and the outside shooting and driving of Brett Johnson. I'd have to second that without a doubt. Wolford and Johnson is outstanding. Andy Oots is doing the job that he has to do underneath as well. Whole Shelby team doing the job. Haven't seen much of Kelly Yarman in the second quarter. They've had pretty much three-guard offense out there with Yarman setting down in favor of Mazza. 
Johnson shot no good, but again, the Wolford's there, and he puts it in. 18 points for Brad Wolford. That was an errant shot that time. We've seen more errant shots and air balls this first half from any game for quite a while. Regal. Well, nothing but net on that one. That time, Brett Johnson lost him in the shuffle. He was there by himself. You don't leave Mark Regal alone. He nailed the three-pointer there. Whippets are doing a very good job of passing the ball around against the Flash's defense. Johnson this time for three. Nothing but net. Can't remember ever seeing a game where two individuals like uh, Wolford and Johnson have just taken over. Where is on the drive and we got a whistle underneath. Thirty-nine twenty-eight. Eleven point lead for Shelby. Personal foul number five. Mike well, maybe might be seven. making a move back when Briggle hit that three-pointer over in the baseline. But uh, Red Johnson says, you're not coming back in my house. He hits a three back here again, 39-28. Well, Wilford and uh, Brett Johnson both are seniors in Coach Moore's program here, and they probably think that they have to assume the leadership, and they certainly have done an excellent job here in the first half. Well, you go back to the first game of the year against Mansfield and Madison. In that ball game, Wolford had 26 and Johnson had 20. They also combined for 24 more rebounds, eight assists, eight steals. So they definitely are the big two, no doubt about that. But I don't want to overshadow the fact that uh, some uh, other players, like uh, Andy Utes in particular, have playing some key roles as well. You, but when you don't score, you just don't see a whole lot of that. But Utes doing a nice job clogging up that middle underneath along with Wolford. And then Mazza and Mayhek doing a job as well, handling the basketball and looking for the open man. There's Luke, but he misses. Wolford gets the offensive board again. Kelly Yarman is back into the game. His shot's no good. And Willard had an unforced turnover there, which is going to give the ball back to the Whippets. Airs are one thing when they're unforced, and it, it makes it that much more magnified. Well, this is one of the very few times in the last several years that Coach Haas doesn't really have what we would call an experienced guard. Wolford now gives it up to Johnson on the baseline, and Johnson still high. Man, oh man, these guys are playing ball tonight. 18 for Johnson. 18 for Wolford, 41 for the Whippets, 11 point lead. Briegel for three. He's starting, Briegel is starting to light up the scoreboard now. I'm sure Brett Johnson will say no more of that and probably try to defend him a little bit closer. He got there a little late that time, rushed him going by. Briegel took a seat on the floor, did not draw the foul, however. Oots inside, turnaround jumper is short. I think partially deflected by Lacey in there. Weirs, drive, misses. And Lacey with the hook puts it in. That Lacey, Johnny, on the spot. Not an instant. Willard's making a small comeback here now right before the half. 41-35. We'll see if uh, Shelby pulls defense out now and goes for the last shot. 11-point lead, down to six. And it looks like they're playing for the last shot, spreading the offense out. That's Johnson. Now Briegel comes out on him. Over to Mazza. Craig is guarded by Chris Long. Down now to 15 seconds. Undoubtedly, that's a strategy that Coach Moore wants to use. Go for the last shot. He's got the lead in the ball. Johnson says run it. Mazza, head fake, gets him off her feet, inside the Wolford. Nice pass, and he is going to Beautiful teamwork that time with the Whippers. And the quarter comes to an end. Excellent basketball in his first half. I love it, basketball season here, and this may be one of the best you're going to see. Both these teams, great first half of play. At the end of that first half, Shelby heads for the locker room with an eight-point lead, 43-35. Stay with us. Second half action coming up next.
play. You've seen the score, 43-35, eight-point advantage for Shelby. Uh, it, it was one whale of a first half. It certainly was, Bob. And the thing, that, one of the things that impressed me the most about the Shelby Whippets tonight, as we talked here at intermission, was their great pass work. A good example of that was right there before the half, and they certainly didn't have a play called or timeout, and they whipped that ball around three times to get it close to the basket for a little bunny shot, and they were successful on it. And their inside play by both Oots and especially Wilford Knight has been outstanding. And then when Willard did switch to man-to-man -to -man for about two minutes, Brett Johnson took over, and that was the end of the man-to-man -man defense, and Coach Haas then had to send them back to the zone. Yeah, you look at uh, the, the statistics in the first half, of course, Wolford and Johnson with 36 of the team's 43 points, four by Oots and three by Mayhek. But the, the main thing there you got to look at is the number of shots taken, which parlays itself to the offensive board. 19 to 40 for 47 percent for Shelby. Now those 40 shots compare with just 27 by Willard. Willard's done a fine job. They've shot well. But in fact, they're shooting at 52 percent, 14 to 27. So they're over the 50 percent mark, which is you know phenomenal for high school basketball. It's where you want to be but they find themselves trailing because they have given up too many second opportunities to Shelby underneath. Wolford and Oots just too strong. That's right, and we'll see if Coach Haas has made any changes, usually he does at halftime, in changing his zone around a little bit or uh, getting on the kids at halftime and telling them that they got the box off, getting a body in front of uh, Wolford especially. So uh, we'll just take a good look and see what happens here, but it's been an exciting game. Well, for Willard, real quickly, before we get started, Eric Weir's had 10 points in the first half. Mark Briegel, 9, including two three-pointers. Matt Lacey and Mike Ringer, 6 apiece. And Chris Long with 4. Shelby will have the basketball to start the second half of play. And it's Craig Mazza out front. We've seen a lot of the combination of Mazza, Mayhek, and Johnson. You say, I don't know if Kelly Army is sick or if the fact that uh, Coach... Moore just likes this alignment in this ball game tonight. We've seen a lot of Jarman in the previous three games. In fact, Jarman uh, coming in having scored 28 points in the first three games, averaging over 90 games. So we have not seen a whole lot of him tonight. That was a critical foul there on Mike Mayhack, the sophomore. I believe that's his third. He's the only one in the ball game in any kind of foul right. trouble. It's a well played game as far as fouls and such, also. And the officials have called a good game so far. They've let them play, but called the necessary fouls. Chris Long, the sophomore, working with the basketball as Willard tries to set up Mark Briegel for a shot. Briegel gets it on the baseline, and there it goes in. Mark Briegel. That time, Briegel was the recipient of a nice pick or screen down low, and he hits about the eight-foot jumper on the right baseline. Now Johnson setting up the offense. Be a little slow working things here to start the second half. Johnson, nice feed again to Ooth and a block underneath by Lacey. Yeah, must have got him with the body. Pretty good block with the hand, but I believe Lacey got him with the body. That's what the official signals, and Ooth should go to the foul line for two free throws. First foul in the game on Lacey. Did a nice job of helping out backside. Nice pass again by Shelby. We've seen that so many times last week in the Colombian game. Just excellent looks. Brad Wolford for a big guy handles the basketball so well. Seems like when the whippets penetrate the basket, they have eyes in their in the back of their heads. Here's a new rule this year we might look at Bob too. This year the official on the second shot under the basket takes the ball and bounces it to the foul shooter, and the other official stays on the sideline, continuing the count. Second one by Oost doesn't go, but Johnson gets the rebound underneath. There's Wolford on the offensive board. His shot's up and another foul. Again, the offensive board work. And that's about the only way that the flashes can stop Wolford so far tonight, and that's fouling. That's not guaranteed to stop it. He's two for two from the line. As we say, coming into the game, a 68% free throw shooter. And again, the Whippets got two offensive rebounds that time, one by Johnson and one by Wolfie. Well, I think he misses. We talk about a 68% shooter. He's also a 62% shooter from the field. Wolfie has a nice touch on the ball for a big player. Good spin and 
good spin on the ball. Chris Long working on the offensive of side. Shot no good. Rebound comes off to Shelby. Johnson on a drive all the way. I think it would have been good if it went. Doesn't go. We have a foul underneath. He has someone, one of the Willard defenders grabbed his arm as he released the shot. Then Griegel. Mark Griegel foul. That'll send Johnson to the line for Griegel, his first personal. Third on Willard already this half. And Johnson is not, is not like Fred Johnson. Johnson coming in the game at 9 for 10, 90 percent from the free throw line. If memory serves me correct, I think he was a top free throw shooter in the NOL last year. Now we'll take a look at the Clippers defense again. They're still playing in their man-to-man -man defense, putting a lot of pressure on the ball, trying to deny the pass on the wings. Nice feet underneath. The Weirs who got open, and Weirs puts it in. Good read from Regal. Baseline, put the shot up over the big guys and knock out of bounds. Last touch by Willard. They have having his problems from the floor, but he's been penetrating well. Like he's done a good job of driving the baseline against the two big boys from Willard. Johnson for three from left baseline, no good. Rebound comes up to Briegel. Now Ringer. No good, rebound Wolfer. And the outlet to Johnson, four on two for Shelby. Johnson decides to hold things up and then go with it. And his shot does not go. Gets his own rebound, good hustle. Notice there who Mayhek is guarding also. He's 5'10. He's guarding number 21. Weirs, who is 6'6. That matchup there may very well affect his offensive play in the ballgame. That would have to be a tough assignment for anyone, let alone somebody who's given up eight inches. Wolfer from just outside the free throw line. Good. And Wolford said, just like shooting a foul shot, that is the foul line. Willard's going to have to call another timeout. Timeout it is, 51 41. 10 point lead for Shelby. 4 37 play, third quarter. We're going to take a few commercial messages, and we'll be right back. We're back once again, and I tell you what, Shelby Whitman, the 10 point lead. Things pretty much in the second half looking like it did in the first half. Shelby hitting the offensive board with Mr. Wolford and Mr. Brett Johnson doing the job offensively. The whip, Whippets have not given up yet, and they've still maintained their poise so far. Two-pointer for Mark Regal, just inside the three-point circle. Now it looks like the flashes have changed into a man-to-man -man defense here. Mayhack for three, no good, rebound controlled by Willard. Three for Briegel, and Mark Briegel starting to heat up. His third field goal of the second half. Boy, those three pointers got your lead in a hurry. 16 in the game for Briegel. Coach Moore wants a timeout now. So, turnabout timeout, fair play. 51 46, five quick points for the flashes. Forces the Shelby Whippets who you see in your screen to call a timeout. We'll take another quick timeout as well, and we'll be right back. Point lead evaporating to five in a matter of seconds. And now Shelby with the basketball. Probably the topic of discussion the timeout was guard Mr. Briegel a little closer and set up your man-to-man uh, -man offense. Three forty-five to play in the third quarter. 
Johnson now front, looking for help. Tries to force it inside the Wolfers, but uh, Willard got a lot of help underneath there. Now Weir, shot is no good. Lacey almost put it through on the offensive side. He really got up that time. Shelby in the ball game now for Shelby, and he goes right to the hoop, and Lacey on the defensive side draws a foul. Todd Feldy bringing some sides in off the bench at six foot four. Another sophomore on the Shelby team. And uh, you look to the years ahead with Mike Mayhek and Kelly Yarman, both sophomores. Feldy a sophomore. And they got junior Craig Mazza and uh, Scott Gurney, who get some playing time as well. Shane Douglas, another junior. So Shelby uh, will have a few ball players back next year as well. But when I like to whip it, starting two sophomores and two juniors. I mean, a Willard team starting two sophomores and two juniors. All right, Coach Moore has got a good blend here of, of sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and that makes for a consistent program down the line. Shelley's first point in the ball game. Takes a second one as well. The sophomore Feldy had great concentration that time on his two free throws. He was only one for five from the free throw line coming into the nice ball game through their first three games. Well, he certainly had great concentration that time on his free throws. Now we'll take a look at the new defense of box and one. The man on Briggle, number three, Mazza. Greg Mazza chasing Briggle. Briggle still gets away to get hold of the basketball, though not open enough to shoot. Weirs hits the basket from outside and a foul. We don't have him in our picture, but Coach Bob Hoff is real happy about that. Now we'll give instructions to Mark Briegel as far as telling Mark how to get over it. Todd Feldy is first. That foul was on Todd Feldy. And counts two-pointer by Weir. And now Weir's at the line. Weir's at 14 in the ballgame. So Bob, can you kind of feel the momentum switching the other way a little bit now the last couple minutes? Highlighted by Briegel's two three-pointers. Now, if we're to make this free throw, that will draw it down to a four-point game. However, the shot is off. Mayhek drives the baseline, shot up, and offensive foul. For Mike Mayhek, it'll be foul number four. So Mike will take a seat as Kelly Yarman comes back into the ball game. Kelly Yarman, great Sophomore for sophomore. And we'll see now if that changes anything as far as chasing Briegel with the box and one. Now it looks like the Whippets have switched back to a man to man defense. Ball gets loose from Briegel. I think he bounced off his teammate's foot. Now Johnson all the way with it and shot blocked by a ringer underneath with a foul on Mike Ringer. Good drive that time by Brett Johnson. He's almost impossible to stop on a one-on-one -on -one -on -one situation. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think Ringer now has three personal fouls, as does Matt Lacey for Willard. So both Lacey and Ringer in a little bit of foul trouble. Johnson at the line, shooting two. And he should be a Mr. Automatic. Hit them both there. Three points off from the line in the second half for Fred Johnson. He's in 21 in the ball game. Both he and Wolford with 21. We were trying to force it inside the ringer and knock out of bounds by Andy Hoot. Good defense that time to the Shelby Whippets. Hoots came over to knock it out, and Wolford came in behind to double team him. Again, setting up in the 2 3 zone for the inbound play. Weirs takes the baseline shot and hits it. Flashes have two good outside perimeter shooters in Weirs and, and, of course, Mark Riggle. They better count Mike Ringer in there as well. Ringer leads the NOL in three point shooting percentage. 63% from out there, plus he's the leading scorer on the team with 18.7 per game.
Wolfer misses and gets his own rebound. Head fake, head fake, three times up and misses again. Gets his own board and puts it up and in. Three chances and eight head fakes later, he gets the two. And Lacey misses on the other side. Griffiths come down in a running game again. Johnson turn around her from in the paint. It's no good. Ooch with the rebound. Shot up. Again, no good. And Wolford going after it. And draws the foul. Wolford with the personal foul. I think probably that's only his second personal foul, though. Personal foul on Brad Wolford, number 44. For the other his second. Four, 40, Draw to the hole. One third to play, third quarter. They'll be on top. Crowd wants to travel. What they get is a two-pointer by Mike Ringer. Good inside shot that time by Mike Ringer. Faked one way and turned around. Took a nice jump shot. Again, down to five-point lead. It's gone from five to ten. Nice pass, Wolford. Beautiful pass work again. Good teamwork by the Whippets. Flash is trying to stay with it, and they're man-to-man -man defense now. They're having their problems. Wolfer picks up his third personal foul as Regal driving by, puts a shot up. Wolfer going for the block, catches a little bit of the wrist. I'm sure Coach Wolfer or Coach uh, Moore will put Wolfer on the bench now for the rest of this third quarter so he doesn't pick up his fourth one. Probably see some substitutions by both coaches here the last 49 seconds. Personal foul, personal foul well, seem to run a bit like mushrooms. Sure. You find a mushroom, you know there's others around. The personal right. foul, they're going halfway through. You get one, you get that second one in a matter of seconds. Brad takes a seat with three. He has sit down with 25 points thus far in the ball game. Shelby can ill afford to leave him on the bench very long this evening. Mark Regal shows the line for Willard. Regal with 16 in the ball game. First free throw is long, however. Regal, 8 of 11, coming into the game from the free throw line at 72 percent. He hits one of two here. Makes it 59-53, six-point lead now for Shelby Whippet, who has the basketball. You see Brett Johnson walking down the court. 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. Yarman, the sophomore, drives. Shot up, no good. Almost fell, but didn't go. And I believe we had a block underneath. I think on Chris Ross saw it up with it. Rothbard's first personal, and that sends Yarman to the line. Yarman yet to score, averaging nine per ball game. Shelby has done an excellent job tonight of driving the sideline and especially the baseline. Yarman misses them both. That'll put a few more gray hairs on Coach Moore's head. And that was a critical situation. We'll see the next time they hold the ball for the last shot. Regal takes a shot. They're not waiting. It's no good. Rebound comes off to Yarman. Gets it off to Johnson. Nice hands by Johnson. They're corralling that pass. I didn't get a chance to see the Shelby football team. If Johnson wasn't a receiver, Coach Stetson should have been talking to him. He's so <laughs> good he was there. Number 25, Chris Hayes from Willard. Well, that was probably a good foul that time by Willard because I'm sure Brett Johnson would have had a lay-in had they not fouled him. Both teams in the one-on-one -on -one situation now for the rest of the game. They'll be already taking more free throws than the two teams combined in the first half of play. So far in this third quarter, Shelby has hit on seven of 12. Two teams combined for just 11 free throws in the first half. Talk about that well-played first down. Still well-played, but they're a little bit more aggressively now, and the fouls are starting to pick up. 
officials have done an excellent job so far tonight in keeping the game in hand. Without a doubt. A couple of good ones. A lot of good ones around. These guys got to come quite a distance. Yes, as we mentioned before the beginning of the game, uh, Steve Trout came a long way from Wapak. Now that's about 100 miles. And Charlie Jones from Newark, that's probably a good 80 miles. Now we'll see if uh, Willard goes for the last shot here. I imagine he'll try to set up Regal. That's well, said if I'm Stevens underneath. Stevens can't get the roll. Down to three seconds left. Johnson doesn't go. No basket. Well, three quarters have come to an end here at Shelby High School and the Whippets. With just eight minutes to play, it will come out on the floor for the fourth quarter for the seven-point lead. It's 60 to 53. Shelby on top. We're here at Shelby. I tell you what, Jim, it was our first year being over here, and uh, I think I sure am glad that we're over here at Shelby. We got a great ball team, and Mr. Reed and company did an excellent job of taking care of us. Very much appreciated. All right, I've known Dick for a long time, worked with him for several years, and he does an excellent job. We'd like to thank he and the administration here for the fine facilities and the cooperation that we've had. Fourth quarter action now underway, as we say, Shelby with a seven-point lead, 60 to 53. Shelby is back to their man-to-man -man defense. Now they put Brett Johnson again back on Griegel. Jarman took the ball away from Weir is now an outlet pass instead of Mazza. Mazza cannot get to it in time and goes out of bounds to the back to the little flashes. Shelby still trying that up-tempo game. They're trying to push the ball down floor every time, trying to make Willard get back and play defense. I know it's early, but you can't stress enough what a big game, what a big game this is as far as NOL-wise goes. It's a double round robin. Everybody's got to play each other twice, but when you got teams like Shelby, Bellevue, and Willard play as well as they do, you don't want to drop a game to anybody. Good block that time. Good defense by the Willard Flashes. And we got a foul on any use the other end. Call that time to the official. Shelby won the walk. Shelby fans won the walk. And indeed he did walk, but it was a foul by Ooch and the right. that scored him into that. Ooch made the unforgivable defensive mistake of not moving his feet, and he hit him with the body. Bruce, that personal foul on number two. And then looking ahead here for timeout, Shelby's got three yet, and Willard has two more. And I imagine both coaches will probably use them all in this last quarter. Ringer hits the first. Ringer's second shot also good. 10 points in the game now for Mike Ringer and Shelby. Red Johnson bringing it up the court. Willard staying in their switching man-to-man -man defense. Wolford, strong move, doesn't go, gets his own board, but we got a foul. And he's on Matt Mason. Wolford a little upset with himself that time that he missed the missed the uh, field goal, should have had an easy three-pointer, but should send him to the line for a one-and-one. One. Four fouls for Matt Lacey. For Matt, that's four on him, and he's going to take a seat for a while. Stevens comes into the ball game. Kevin Stevens at six foot three. Of course, Lacey sitting down at six foot six. Wolford misses the first, the one and one. Ball's loose. Johnson still fight for it. And we got a foul. Red Johnson, a little overzealous in his uh, attempt to get the ball away. Boy, that's a foul I'm sure Coach Steve Moore didn't like, didn't first want, because it was just uh, almost a jump ball situation. It was right in front of the official, though. So Mike Ringer will step through the free throw line. Three for three here in this quarter for Mike Ringer. Down to 
Down to a four-point lead. Ringer can make it three, and he does. Closest that the world has been for quite some time. The Shelby fans trying to get there with the team on the go. And we got a foul. Offensive foul on the going to go against Johnson. I think Coach Moore wants to take a timeout now to settle his charges down. Shelby with the timeout. Coach Moore doesn't want his team to panic, but that's 60-57. You're just talking one three-pointer away from being a new ball game. And we'll have got the guys to shoot them. 642 to play in the game. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back for more fourth quarter action right after these. You see Coach Moore's bench group, they uh, starting to look a little bit on the word side. Their lead at one time 11 points in the ball game, now down to just three at 60-57, and Willard with the basketball. Shelby's going to try to pick the tempo up a little bit more defensively now, and they're picking up the Willard flashes man-to-man -man all over the court. A three-point attempt is in and out. So the Willard almost tied it up. And now Shelby with a chance to extend her lead. It looks to go inside to Wolford. Uh, Good defense that time, the slices. That time they put a man on the side and had one coming in behind him. That's just about what you have to do with him. A man-to-man -man defense is almost double team him. Well, Mayag now comes back into the ball game for Yarman. He he will have to be very careful as he has four personals on him. The offense has seemed to suffer a bit without him. Even though he wasn't doing a whole lot of scoring, just tossing in a pair of three-pointers. He wasn't doing some of the necessary things as far as, you know, passing the ball, looking for the open man and such. Seems like the Fleischer's man-to-man defense has really improved the last couple of minutes. Well, with the steal, now again, we'll have an opportunity to tie. Regal for the baseline for two. It's good. 60-59, Shelby by one. And a foul underneath as Ooch goes strong to the basket. Strong move that time on the baseline by Ooch. Go to the free throw line now for a pair. Momentum certainly, Bob, has shifted the last couple of minutes toward the Willard Flashers. They'll be still hanging on to that one-point advantage, however. We expected a win of the ball game, and boy, we had it. Willard did. Shelby looked so strong for the first three quarters of play, but Willard never did give it up for long. They just hung around that usually right around the 8, 10 point mark. And then as it got late in the third quarter and early in the fourth quarter, they reached around at five points or so. Now all of a sudden down to one point game. And two good ball clubs as we have here. And this is the way it should be. Should go down to the last minute. And Frito Uch has made the first point in the quarter for Shelby. And he comes at the 547 mark. Long. Shelby fans again want to travel, but no call. Briegel for three. It's no good. Followed by Stevens. It's no good. I believe Mayhap's gone. I believe he fouled him from behind. That should be his fifth personal foul on Mayhap. Young, promising sophomore. You see him heading for the bench. Personal Five personal fouls, and uh, Mike Mayhek takes a seat after having picked up six points. More importantly, it was just his aggressiveness going to the board and the offensive flow of things. Even the, the smallest young man in the is, only at five foot ten, still made some things happen in there. Shelby now with Mazza, Yarman, Johnson, Oot, and Wolford on the floor. Willard with Stevens shooting a free throw, and he misses that. Stevens, Long, Ringer, Weirs, and Briegel on the floor for the flashes. Shelby 
They'll be trying to run their motion offense now against the Slices. Playing with a little bit more deliberation now. Mouser was looking at Wolford, couldn't get it to him. Yarman looks at the shot and takes it. It's blocked by Chris Long. Good block that time by Chris Long for a small sophomore. Steal off run by Johnson, takes it away from Long. Yarman now, not shy, goes to the hoop, puts it up in the end. Kelly Yarman with the hoop. First point to the game, and it puts the Shelby Whippets up by five at 64 59. When the going gets tough, the tough go to Briegel, and Briegel goes baseline and draws a foul. Brad Wolford picking the first goal, and for Brad, that is number four. And I think Coach Moore will probably take him out of the game for a minute, give him a breather, because I'm sure he wants to him at the wire. Wolford gets a hand as he takes the seat. Todd Feldy in the ball game, and Mr. Feldy got to be feeling a little bit of butterflies in there. One good thing, though, he, he was in earlier in the game, and that should help him here. Regal misses the free throw. It looks like Mark Regal's timing is off on his free throws tonight. Remember, he had that injury, and that, that ankle injury may be a cause, you know, as far as he might not have had the time in the gym that he would normally be having. Whitlock's now going to be a little bit more deliberate with their offense. Ball not going to bounce. Last touch by Stevens of the Flashes. Now Lacey checks back in for the Flashes as Stevens sits down. Lacey playing with four personals as well. They have set up their out-of-bounds play against the Flashes defense here. Johnson gets it into Miles, but Al Craig working with Ringer on him. Whippers doing a good job of passing the ball around their motion offense. They get it inside to Oot, and Oot tried to get it to Feldy. Feldy just was not looking for the pass. He turned for the rebound, and Oot tries to give up a five-footer to get Feldy a two-footer. That time probably he should have taken a little shot there because he did have a rebound to Feldy on the other side. That's one of the problems, though, when Wolford and uh, Utzer who used to working together so much. Wolford might have been looking for that. That's right. We'll see how long Coach Moore leaves Wolford sit on the bench. Here's out front with Jarman on him. Ringer for three, and he hit, hit for one. What a shot. In a crucial situation, and Mike Ringer hits the big one. He was very cool in shooting it. Seven points in the fourth quarter so far for Mike Ringer. Now you'll see the strategy working both coaches now. Both of coaches have two timeouts yet. Two point difference, three and a half minutes to go. Wolford back in the ball game. He didn't sit down long. 3.28 to play, 64-62. Shelby on top by a pair. And we got a foul. Briegel going to get called for the block. His mouth that was looking to go to the hole. For Briegel, that's just personal foul number two. Personal foul number 31 for Willard Mark Briegel. His second. We come down to the last couple of minutes here, and we'll see how important these free throws are for both sides. For Mr. Craig Miles, it'll be the first time for him going to the free throw line on the season. See how he does at the line. As I say, first time of the year, and it's 64-62, late in a big, big ball game against their number one rival. No pressure, just a one and one. He hits it. Mazda took a deep breath, concentrated on the basket, knocked it home. Make that first one. It's always a lot easier to make the second one. You don't make the first one, you don't get the second one. Mazda hits them both. Couple of big free throws to the Shelby Whippets here. Now Chris Long brings it up against Mazda. Four-point Shelby lead. 
Lacey inside, tries to get it over to Ringer. It's stolen away. Shelby, here goes Mazda to the hole up and in. Great Mazda. 68 62 Shelby. Big defensive play that time to the Shelby Whippets. Long brings it the other way, and again, it's going to be stolen away by Shelby. Brett Johnson with it. Johnson down to Oost. Oost up off the glass. No good. Wolfer with the follow. Now he gets it out to Mazda, and Shelby will slow it down. Jarman drives and a foul underneath. No cost, I believe, wants a timeout. Now Dover is charges with him. Timeout, Willard, 68 62. Shelby on top by six. 2.43 to play in the ball game. Don't go away, folks. We will be back in just a moment. Shelby on top by six. And last two times down the floor, Willard has not got a shot off. And that's because of Shelby's defense. They did a tremendous job of pressing the ball out front and on the side. They've had two and three players around the ball each time, and they came up with a loose one. Even though they missed the, the easy puck at that time, they followed up with a rebound and got fouled. So they should go to the line now. Two shots. Kelly Armin. This is the first one. Norman just hasn't seemed to be with the program tonight. Done a fine job defensively, offensively. Not a bad score, but tonight just having his problems. There's shots just a little strong. And Johnson comes up with it for the weapon. The little big man. Big rebound again. Now they can kind of take their time, pass the ball around, take some seconds off the clock. They can run their motion offense now. And we got a foul off front. I believe this is going to go against Chris Long. They're going to put Yarman back on the line. I'm sure Coach uh, Moore, though, would like to see Brett Johnson with the ball a little bit more and have him on the line. So they're going to send Yarman to the line, and you got to figure if you're going to send somebody to the line, it'd be Yarman or else Mazda. If you say Mazda had not even shot any coming in, he did hit two crucial ones earlier in the quarter. But Yarman misses the front end of the one and one. And I'm sure in the next situation, Shelby will want to have Johnson to have the ball and clear out for him. Rigo loses the ball. Oost gets it. Johnson tries to get it ahead to Mazda. <laughs> and Coach Moore did a flip-flop on that one. Said, we had the ball. We had the ball. <laughs> this, is a, this is the only time I wish we had two cameras because, well, I tell you, Coach Moore was flopping around like a fish out of water. <laughs> And steal off front again. Mazda takes it away from Long, gets it out to Wolford. Wolford puts it up and in, and it counts, and a foul. Again, that was great defensive effort that time against the Willard guard up front. Completely stole the ball away from him. Wolford slowed it down a bit. I think he's seen Yarmin coming on his left side. Last second, he says, what the heck? I'm going for it against the little guy. He gets the bucket and the foul. That's right. That was a great NBA play that time, a continuation of the bucket and the foul. And I think that might have done the slices in tonight. 157 to play, and that puts Shelby on top, 70-62, with Wolford going to the line. Sophomore Chris Long at 5'10", just no match for the big 6'6", six -six Brad Wolford. And Brad hits the three-pointer. He makes it a three-point play with that free throw, and it's 71-62. Regal, shot up, no good, rebound, Wolfer. Oh, it's stolen away by Regal, but Wolfer gets it back now off the hoot, across to Johnson, Johnson to the hole, and in. Yep, tempo game, the Olympics is now picking up more as the game progresses. First bucket of the quarter for Brett Johnson, but it's a big one, giving an 11-point lead to Shelby. And we got a foul on Yarman. Before the shot, one and one, with Weirs going to the line. Well, in that case, it's probably a good foul because he made the bucket. Coach Moore a little disappointed with the defense of the arm at that time. But we haven't seen the uh, grip of, or the, excuse me, we haven't seen Willard press any the whole game tonight. I'm, I'm sure that they'll almost have to try to press if he's successful on these free throws. They'll be very quick. Even the big guys can move the floor. That may be what Coach House is looking at. I think you're right, Bob. I, I think that he realizes that he, he just doesn't have the team speed 
that Shelby does. And inexperience is going to be a factor, too. I mean, press and still, you know, I mean, it's something you got to work at. And when you're talking two sophomores and two juniors against a fairly experienced and quick Shelby team, I just don't know if that's the kind of game he wants to get into against the Whippets. But as you say, he has to do it now. It looks almost, they're almost effective. And we got a foul. This is going to be on Ringer. And for Ringer, that's number five. So Mike Ringer is disqualified from the ball game. He takes the seat or heads that way. Personal foul on number 53, Mike Ringer. Chris Rothbar will come in to replace Ringer. There you see Chris. 73-64, nine-point lead for Shelby. Craig Mazza will step to the line. Craig, two for two from the free throw line. Another but net. Second one, no good. Weir's with the rebound. Now Hay brings it up floor. Weir's with the shot. It's no good. Rebound loose, and we got a foul underneath. Matt Lacey with a personal foul. You see over there, 41. And for Matt, that's number five on him. Wolford has had himself a tremendous ball game and he steps up to the line. 28 points in the game. You can certainly see that his experience has showed in the game tonight against the younger Willard Blythe as he played a tremendous ball game. Very strong. Looks a little on the spindly side, but uh, from what we've seen in two games, a very strong inside player. Very wiry. Done a tremendous job inside in the two games that we've seen him, and in the couple games that we haven't seen him. Stevens with the shot from the baseline. It's good for two. Coach Hoss calls his last timeout. Might be just a little too little, a little too late. 76 66, 10 point game. Let's keep it here, Jim. I tell you what, tremendously impressed with the Shelby Whippets. Yes, they certainly have come a long ways in the last couple of years. They are a fundamentally sound ball club this evening. Done a tremendous job, and I basically think they've done a tremendous job defensively here in the last couple of minutes. Picked up several loose balls, double teamed at the right time, and offensively, they done well with Wilford inside. They've driven the baseline several times tonight. And then at times they've hit the outside shot. Well-balanced ball club. They've got to be, I mean, there's no doubt already they were one of the favorites. They've got to be at the forefront now. Tomorrow night we'll know even more because Shelby goes to Bellevue, the other front runner. Willard, I tell you what, very young, but a very talented ball team. And I tell you what, if you're going to beat Willard, you better do it now because the season progresses. That might not be a, a possibility. I'm sure that's going to get better and better. I'm sure that's what Coach Haas remind his players there in the huddle that uh, this is the time to learn and that we'll get them later on in the year. Not an easy start for Willard, starting out with Mansfield Madison to win there, losing to Cleveland South. A win last week against Giant and losing to Sandusky. Some pretty tough ball teams along the road. We will have them on again tomorrow as the Cyrus travels to Willard for another NOL contest. That'll be one of our TD54 games tomorrow along with the Giant at Tiffin Columbian ball game. Looks like Willard probably tried to foul now. Chris Hay draws a personal foul and will send Johnson to the free throw line. Even trailing by 10 with under 40 seconds to play, Willard not giving it up. Probably one of the very few seasons where Willard has started out under the 500 side in their first five games. I sure can't remember one. And I've been around for a couple, two, three years. That's a long season, though. Anything can happen, and 
And again, I'm sure Coach Moore will warn his charge of that tomorrow night as we travel up against the talented Bellevue squad. Bellevue playing at Chiffin tonight. Of course, no way of knowing how things are going up there at this moment. And Johnson draws the foul off front. Coach Moore is asking, what are you doing? That's right, we have a 12-point lead to stop the clock. Coach Moore off of that seat like a rocket. You don't give him a chance to score with the clock stopped. Now, Briegel, he's shooting two. Hits the first. Gives him 20 points in the ball game. High score tonight for Willard. And Matt Adams with a 23 checks into the ball game. Matt, of course, as we say, the leading scorer in the JV game earlier for Willard with 18. Ball knocked out of bounds there. Last touch by Chris Hay. Still 26 ticks left on the clock. Like a place who's have not given up, they're putting a full court man-to-man -man press on the Hooker. This side of pass is knocked away out near midcourt by Kevin Stevens. Uh, Whippers should have a little bit more room to inbound this at, here at half court. We do get it off to Wolford. Wolford, nice feed over to Ood's off the glass and in. We've seen it a lot, and I'm sure we'll see it a lot more as the season progresses. Brad Wolford, excellent all around player, and that includes the passing skills. Stevens for three, his shot's no good. Rothard jumps back to the three-point shot, puts it up, no good, and Wolford clears. Foul, Johnson down, he's in the background, so Johnson Moore shake hands as the team's over. Still be people on the floor. I think there's no goal post to tear down. It's still up in the air. But Shelby obviously happy with their win. 80, 68, Shelby with it. Knock off the trip to play to Bill Woodard and what was an excellent, exciting ball game and close to what the final score would have been. I think overall, one of the best games we've had this year, Bob. And as we look back in the first half, I can't forget the exciting and tremendous offensive rebounding by Wolford. One of the most outstanding jobs we've seen for a long time. He completely dominated the paint inside. And also, the outside play of Johnson, as well as some of the other players, they had and so on, they did an outstanding job tonight. I know Willard has a young team, and I'm sure we'll see more of them as the season progresses, but I think the, night, the game tonight here certainly belongs to Shelby Whippers. Just an outstanding, outstanding ball game. You know, we've had a couple blowouts early in the year here on TV 54, and I say although this ends up a 12-pointer, it was not a 12-point ball game. Shelby Whippers just played a tremendous game. As you say, look out for Willard Crimson Flashes. They are just going to get better and better. But right now, Shelby is the team of the of the night, at least, anyhow, it looks like one of these top teams in the NOL, as expected. Run down the final scoring real quick for the ball game. Brad Wolford led the way tonight for Shelby with 30 points. Brad Johnson, Mr. Outside, in comparison to Wolford's Mr. Inside, Johnson with 26 points in the game. Andy Ood chipped in with nine hard-earned points. Craig Mazza, five points, all in the fourth quarter, all crucial points. Great job, Craig Mazza. I mean, you don't hear a lot. They did an excellent job. Mike Mayhead, six points with a pair of three-pointers. Kelly Arm and Todd Shelby chipped in two apiece. For Willard, they were led by Mark Regal, 21 points. It looks to be like Mark might be coming back pretty well now from that ankle injury. He looks pretty good out there tonight, although his timing may be... Really, in his opinion, is the case.